Hi everyone, I'm going to be doing today a comparison of the oil pastel brands that I have, which are Sennelier, Mongio Gallery, Neo Pastel, and Paul Rubens. Please excuse my voice, I'm still a bit sick, but I hope it's understandable. I'm going to switch the camera so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to start with Sennelier because it's the one that I've used the most. By the way, this is only printing paper. I would normally use pastel mat, but I didn't want to waste it right there. So yeah, let's see. I think these are the creamiest, although Paul Rubens is also quite soft. Um, so yeah, I would say these are the creamiest. They are really, really nice. Blend super easily. Um, you don't have to make any effort, you see. They blend really well. Fingers or paper stamps, doesn't matter. What an ugly swatch. Um, yeah, they are super creamy, even in this very terrible paper. Look at that. Yeah, it is the ugliest swatch on earth, but it doesn't matter. The thing is, they are beautiful, they are light fast, they do exactly everything that I want them to do, so I have no complaints about them. They layer really well over the other ones, and the white is the best, I think. Keep in mind this paper is not great or ideal in any way to layer, but still, still you get a very nice white there. So, and if you apply pressure, which I normally don't, you get an even more powerful white. I've been using them for a little bit by now, and I can clearly see the effects that the temperature have on them. It's not that warm yet here, it's only 22 degrees inside the house, and these paints are beginning to become like um, maybe even too soft to my taste because I don't like I don't like a lot of texture on my works, just a little bit on the highlights. But this is too much. Of course, you can blend, but yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be using them during summer because like this, they are very usable. But if I'm going to Spain, it will be 35 degrees. They will melt. There is something to note, and is that all the paints, all the colors that they have are not consistent. So some of them are very opaque, some are semi-opaque, and some others are translucent or semi-translucent. For example, this blue is super opaque. I'm not putting pressure. Really, really opaque. But this other blue, it's not. You can see very well the strokes where there is a little bit more pigment. I hope the camera is picking it up, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you can clearly see the difference. This one is so much more opaque in just one stroke. And here to cover more, you need to apply more paint and it still is streaky looking. Um, this one is opaque and this one is translucent. Yeah, I think you can see the difference in opacity. I use them all the time. I don't really think much in terms of opacity, but rather in color. And so far I haven't had a lot of issues. So I like them. These are my favorite paints so far. Let's move on. The next ones that I'm going to try are the Mungio Gallery ones because I have them the longest. I have these ones the longest and I think they are really great. Look. <laughs> these paints um, I think the only cone that they have, or the one, or the only cone for me, is that they they don't tell you the pigments that they've used. You don't know about how light fast things they are. Um, you don't know about their life fastness. Yeah, so you don't know if they are light resistant or not. But other than that, I think these are amazing. They are very affordable. Blend very well. Mm, they layer nicely. I combine them with the Sennelier all the time, that is not an issue. They blend well, but they are firmer, so I can tell, like, they are becoming almost like Sennelier were a month ago or two months ago when it was cooler here. So to me right now, the consistency of this is ideal. I think this is ideal. They feel super nice, super pigmented, blend well, layer well, they are very affordable. Oh, and you can, you can sharpen them. This one is a bit blunt, 
and they keep their point quite well. So to draw details, they are really good. Keep in mind, this is not sharp, but still. Yeah, I didn't show you that on the sennelier. You can definitely do it. I use them like this a lot. But if you need a bolder stroke, you have to press more and then they are so soft that the stroke is much wider. Oh well. This I don't have. So yeah, you can sharpen them with an exacto knife or even with some paper. Yeah, they allow you for everything. The only issue is that I don't know the pigment. Other than that, I think they are wonderful. Ooh, they feel so nice right now. But they are not mushy, like the other ones can get. Yeah, I like them. And all the colors in the range have the same consistency or same opacity. And that can also be helpful. You can layer really, really well. Wow. Next, I'm gonna do the Paul Rubens. These were sent to me. I thought I would disclose it. They are super creamy. I would say parallel with Sennelier. But these ones are even more prone to leave texture. I didn't apply any pressure here, like barely anything and don't seem to layer as well. So I would only recommend them for people that like to work more impressionistic, that you like texture, that you apply the paint and it's kind of like the final layer already because they don't layer as well if you want a smooth finish. If you don't mind the texture, you can apply pressure and you get it. Then you get a lot of color. But once you blend, they don't look as nice to me. Of course, you can you can definitely work with them that way. I've done it. But I think their strength is for this type of more expressive work. So yeah, don't layer really well. But if you let them sit for a day or so, the next day you can continue. Because although these paints don't dry, they cure a little bit and they get slightly harder. I also don't know about the life fastness of this, so it's also something to consider. And the sticks are very oily. And I mean, even the outside, the wrapper, it's just... I think you can see the sheen of my hands. That is from... It's just from the wrapper. I think they will work really well for other people, but since I like very smooth finishes, they are not the best for me. But they are good. I mean, look, that is insane. But also, they are chunky in the red. <laughs> like it is crazy how pigmented they are. And the last ones that I'm gonna try are the Carandash Neo Pastel. These ones are thinner. I will show you a comparison in a moment. Um, they are the hardest of the four of them. But they are still softer than they were a week ago. <laughs> These feel more like crayons to me because, because of the harder consistency and how well you can sharpen them and make details with them, like. But you can also be bold with them. The thing is, because they are harder, the hardest, you actually get a lot more control. Yeah, but they blend very well as well. These are very light fast as well. And I don't know, I think they are a great addition to my collection. So I mainly paint with Sennelier, or I've been painting mainly with Sennelier, but I think these ones may be a lot better for the summer. I don't see myself reaching 
for the pole woven for the sennelier, you know, cost 37 degrees. I don't see myself doing that. But I may take this one with me. Yeah, I think these ones are the most expensive of them all. And they are kind of similar to the, like in performance, to the Mungio ones. Let me show you the difference in size. It's huge. It's huge. And Astanelier, they are a bit wider than Neo Pastels, but you get a lot more on the Mungio ones. And the Paul Bouvens are also chunky, very chunky, which is nice. You get a lot more product. And I think for the Paul Rubens, you kind of need the bigger size because otherwise they would break really easily. Wow. Yeah, like it is mesmerizing how much paint they need. Okay, I'm gonna clean all of this and I'm gonna show you some of the paintings that I've done using predominantly one of the brands. One second. So this painting is done using only Sennelier. I just finished it this morning. You may not be able to notice the difference, but to me, this one compared with the ones that I did a month ago or so using the same, same brand, looks a lot less defined and more textured. And that's because the paints were softer and I wasn't able to put finer lines and finer details. I like the result, but I really see a big difference. So yeah, these ones are Sennelier only. After I painted, I used, I used the fixative, Sennelier fixative, and that thing stinks. Oh my God. Okay, next one. This one has been painted using both Sennelier and Carandash, mostly Carandash. But since I don't have many colors, I needed to use some others from the Sennelier range. But all of these, basically all of this, all of that, most of the face, most of it is Carandash. And it really has, it really has like a different type of finish. It is very smooth and also so well blended. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it looks different to me. And it definitely felt that I was painting in a different way. I enjoyed painting it. It was a bit of a challenge, but it was because of the color palette. The paints were really nice. This one is only a sketch that I did with Paul Rubens. In, I didn't continue it because, because of the layering issue. You can work with it, of course. Um, I mean, you can work with them and you can make details and you can do all of that, but it is just harder because I think these paints work much better for bolder works and mine are not, but still. Something that I have issue with these paints is to, when you are layering and you blend, the value of the color seems to get lost. For me, it was very difficult in this area to keep dark values on. As I was blending, they were becoming lighter in tone. So that was something. I really think they look the best with a blending and with texture. And if you work that way, they are very nice. And okay. So I have two more for Mungio. This was the first thing that I did and it was almost all of it in Mungio. But because it was also the first thing that I, that I tried, it, I think you cannot expect the same type of you know, finish or detail or whatever. Like it was my first contact with oil pastels ever since kindergarten. So. Oh, it stinks so badly. And I already applied this last week. Ugh. Oh, I have to open the window again. And this one is a mix of Sennelier and Mungio. 
I use Mungio quite a lot in this piece because I don't have oranges and bread from Sennelier. So basically most of it were, were Mungios, not on the hair, but the skin, all this area is only Mungio. And I think because I already have some experience with oil pastels in general, I think they look a lot better in this one. I'm trying to avoid the sheen. Oh, I'm gonna open right now. This is blah. Yeah, I am not super pleased with the fix of this. I think it works well, but oh. And this is it. I think, I don't think I have a lot more to add. I will put on the screen like a proper table with everything. Yeah, I will keep you updated and if I try any other paint or any other oil pastel, I will update the description box. So that's all for today and have a nice day. Bye bye. I hope it was useful. Bye bye. <laughs>